G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an Infiltrator pistol, not to be confused with an Infiltrator SMG, which is a different mod, originally released by Degenerate Zack a few months ago as of this recording. This redux, this facelift of this mod, this uh, touch-up, is done by a friend of the channel, T6M, and one of the main functions of it is that you can change it into a pistol now, which allows you to have extra range should you be using this with a full gunslinger um, perk setup, which is nice. So at its core, it's a very similar weapon, probably the same except for a few couple of things, but it's got vanilla game animations. You replace this helical drum that you see at the top of the uh, rifle, the pistol at the moment, um, like a plasma cartridge from a plasma gun. It also features vanilla game sounds very familiar to the pipe gun. So firing the 38 cartridges, it sounds like a pipe gun. Makes sense. A little bit of attachments, so we'll get into them. Let's get started. So for the receivers, you've got this thing in automatic and both in semi-automatic. The strongest semi-auto receiver is the overpowered receiver, giving you epic damage. Gun nut rank 4 is required for that, so we'll throw that on. And you can extend this thing's range out even further with the uh, longer barrel. Although there is merits to using the short barrel here because it actually gives you increased critical damage, which means you'll have to get very close to enemies to actually see all of that critical damage um, happen, but when you do, this thing should be hitting a lot harder and worth that extra risk of getting nice and close to your enemies, which I think is a pretty good trade-off. But for starters, we'll just go for a long barrel here, give us almost 300 range, which is great. We'll actually decrease the accuracy somehow, perhaps the stability of the weapon not quite as good, but now we can change the grips on this thing. So you can change it into a rifle and you'll see that the uh, the range drops significantly, so if we can keep the uh, the rifle stock off of this thing, that would be a lot better. So we'll look for anything that will give us the extra range, and maybe a bit of accuracy bonus would be nice too. The wood grip appears to do that, and we'll also get better bash and aim with scripts as well. Very, very nice. You can chamber this thing up in... Uh, 10 millimeters if you want with quick eject magazines and also 5.56s. Now the mod has done a pretty good job at allowing the player to use these um, heavier cartridges but still do good damage. What you trade off here is actually the fire rate. So the the fire rate and the damage is going to be considerably changed by this but it'll allow you to actually use the 5.56s fairly efficiently if you even if you aren't um, using them in the most high rate of fire setup. So that's pretty cool. We we'll also get an extra range out of this thing because we're firing that heavy around and we're getting 217 damage out of it with the overpowered receiver. Isn't that nice? Now, right now we've got the uh, option to choose sights. So there's also glow sights, laser sights, which you'll just uh, aim along that laser sight too. Might be worth it for a uh, close quarters version of this particular weapon. There's also reflex sights, combat sights, and scopes, which we want to throw on. Maybe we'll go for a recon scope because they give you a good um, good view of your targets without giving you horrible tunnel vision like standard scopes do. Also increase their accuracy a little bit, make it slightly better utilizing in that. And we can throw a suppressor on even further now just to really hone in that extra little bit of damage. So we're almost hitting 300 for this weapon. For a weapon that was, you know, designed to be like a pipe gun replacer, it is definitely hitting hard. The rate of fire might be a little bit of a problem, but this one for its long range or longer range role, probably medium range at this stage, is certainly looking pretty good. Now, you can change what this thing looks like. If you've got a polymer, I suppose, stock, it'll actually change the uh, colors along with it, but that is stuck on wood. We can make it match, though, if we want, for four wood. May as well, right? We've got to have it all matching. Maybe it looks like it's going to be slightly better. So, as... Well, you can't really see it, but, um... It's a, it's a scoped pistol at this stage, so that might be interesting, but we'll definitely try this thing out in many different forms just to see how well it can do in multiple roles, but there's our infiltrator pistol as is. Let's get started, I suppose. This weapon has been injected onto leveled list, so I'm here at Clarius now. There's an overpowered infiltrator rifle just there, but more importantly, there's Careless Whispers. It's one of the uniques of this thing, so it gives you the violent legendary effect, so more damage and limb damage, but... More recoil, chambered in the 5.56s with a 10 times night vision scope, muzzle break, and carbon fiber black. Very tactical. Careless whispers, you would have thought a weapon that would be named whispers would have a suppressor to make it quiet, but 
Hmm. Maybe they're so careless that there are very loud whispers. Next unique we'll find is Linda's Lament here at Arturo's in Diamond City. We're gonna have to do this up a little bit, but we're definitely keeping the shorter barrel. So it's basic at the moment, but fairly cheap considering. Unfortunately, the, the last unique I can't show you getting that. It's an incendiary version that you get from Bullet from that kid on the fridge quest. You know, the one that everyone hates. But I've got this amusing dance, so at least you get that. All right, so I've modified the unique versions as such. I've actually put a suppressor on Careless Whispers, and I've also replaced the scope with a non-night um, vision variant. So that's just a standard 10 times scope. That's pretty simple. This one, I've given a reflex sight up the top. They're the same grip as we had on our first um, infiltrator pistol that we did, so it's going to be a gunslinger weapon still. 5.56s five, five, with a calibrated powerful receiver for getting as many criticals as possible. Obviously, the uh, shorter barrel and the reflex sight will lend itself well to getting a lot of shots, and since it's a pistol, I expect this thing to be getting criticals very quickly when we actually use it in VATS. And lastly, the one that we bought at Cleo's that wasn't unique, I've just turned this into a bullet hose. Firing 38s with a powerful auto receiver, long barrel stock, and suppressor as well, um, doing 67 damage. We're going to get through those rounds pretty quickly, but if we happen to get sneak criticals, maybe it'll be a pretty fast killer, but I wouldn't expect it to be doing too well outside of that. Welcome back to the immersive Gunners Plaza. Here is our infiltrator pistol in all of its glory in first person. Yep, we've already seen the animations before, just plasma gun, but when you aim down the sights, or the scope in this case, a little bit of scope sway going on, but not a lot of recoil, and that's as fast as we're going to get the rate of fire with the 5.56s five, in this thing. But it's going to be hitting for pretty hard damage, so if we can snipe with this thing, it's going to be pretty good. You'll notice that since we're using pistol animations and we've got that rifle stock on, uh, Iris is currently using her chin to stabilize that gun as she's looking, presumably looking down the scope with the, the eye that's like positioned in front of it. Now, I'm not an educated shooter, but I could probably tell you that don't, um, stabilize any firearms on your chin, you might lose a tooth or knock your entire jaw loose, so, you know, that's so, that's okay, because we're playing Fallout, it's a land of fantasy and nothing makes sense, so we're gonna let that one slide. Also, if you use a uh, classic holstered weapon, since this thing is a pistol, it'll be mounted on your hip, which means this gigantic rifle stock will just be protruding out, and, uh, might cause clipping. Actually, it doesn't, that's fine. Alright, the second one, this is the violent version, the careless whisper as it was, and we've already seen what the infiltrator looks like in its sort of current state where you hold it like a proper rifle. This thing is completely stable when aiming down the scope, which means it's going to be quite easy to see, but that's a heavy recoil, that's like a hunting rifle recoil coming out of that thing, so maybe it won't be as good as our pistol version, not to mention its range will be significantly less because it's not a gunslinger type weapon. And here is our lucky version with the short barrel the, and the uh, reflex sight. Probably could have put a suppressor on this thing, but it's fine. And lastly, we've got our bullet hose version firing a 38 at a rate that is very similar to that of the uh, pipe gun in the vanilla game. But it looks a lot better because it's not made out of junk, so... We'll get started, and uh, we'll go over to this spot, and we've got a decent zoom in, and we can almost one-shot these gunners by shooting them in the head, and that is the power of Gunslinger right there. We're just getting a little extra bit of range to almost neutralize them in a single shot, and we do neutralize them in a single shot if we get a headshot at this range, which is uh, most fortuitous, wouldn't you think? But if we want to get a closer look, we can use the uh, this scope. Follow-up shots, a little bit more difficult because of the increased recoil, but uh, using this as a sniper, it's good. Now, one of the things I do like about what um, T6M does is he supports the system... Supports the system, like, no. No, he's not a copper bootlicker. He supports Fallout for Todd's system of a, a modular weapon system because a lot of the guns in the game can be modified to do things differently and you can modify them for certain roles and um, it allows you just that extra little bit of versatility for your weapon mods and um, Dak didn't do it when he originally released the SMG he just said that this is a close range thing and you do lots of damage and this and that but T6M has come along and said you know what this is a gun that can do anything you should get me with a shotgun who knows We'll creep a little bit closer just to see what kind of damage this thing can do. What are you shooting me with? What was that? 
it was a Sega 12. Would have been my first guess, actually. But now we are up close and personal. We can uh, unleash the criticals on this thing. And don't they hurt, Mr. Gunner. At least the second shot didn't. And with uh, minimal barrel length, well, generally, light weapon, pistol animations, we can get all of those uh, criticals back at a fairly fast rate if we want to. Not particularly worried about them taking many, many bullets to kill when I'm shooting at them with the 38 rounds because they're cheap, they're light, and you tend to want to get rid of them pretty fast anyway. It's probably going to be stronger than any pipe guns would be firing the same cartridge, so are you okay with that? Plus a little extra stagger chance that you get from the commando perks sometimes allows you to completely uh, entrap enemies within uh, staggers. Not when they're doing their getting up animation, though. Also helps if you dial in those headshots, helped by uh, our VAPs, our bullet time system. Man, that really makes the game easy, doesn't it? Somehow too easy. Or perhaps the weapon is just performing extremely well in its current uh, setup. We're going to run out of our uh, bullets very quickly using this, though. Taking 50 bullets to kill the one guy at... Um, not all that impressive, I don't think. Well, unless you want to not... Unless you aren't carrying around like a billion of these. But if you aren't and you want to play this thing more stealthy, you'll find that it's actually an effective weapon system. Especially if you were going to close range in this thing. Okay, I'm being surrounded right now. How about a little bit more VAX playtime? Okay, next trick is to go over to our 556 version and then crit with that. Okay, still not as impressive as the calibrated powerful version with the uh, lucky legendary effect. Now, one of the drawbacks of using a scoped pistol in this game is that you don't get sniper knockdowns. I would assume that this one is capable of doing it. We just need to find a target that will withstand as many shots as the chance. There we go. There's a sniper knockdown. It's exactly what you want to see. And if you do it in slow motion, the ragdoll physics go all weird and they get thrown against the wall like that. Like, interesting. But, you know, despite the fairly uh, basic nature of this thing, I mean, like, look, looks-wise, I think it's a pretty cool weapon in and of itself. But, you know, it's not one of those super tactical mods that, you know, goes out of its way to replicate something from Call of Duty. It's actually performing extremely well. Pretty sure that was a nut shot in slow motion. Didn't mean to be this brutal, but here we are. Let's go back to our critical version now. Perhaps time for some gun poo. Uh, we're not going to do too well here. Tell you what, I got three criticals. Let's use all of them. Get extra damage through gun through on that next shot, so that's nice. The rate of fire on this thing. Yeah. If I was to utilize a version with 38 at this stage, it'd probably be a smarter tactical choice, don't you think? The question is, can we outpace the stim pack? We can as well, isn't that good? Probably due to the uh extreme rate of fire on this thing to be honest if we are shooting any any slower then you probably wouldn't be able to get the job done that guy was completely stun locked until the point where i killed him so there you go that's the creation club lady you decided to both fire her shot and then do the do, do a stim pack at the same time so that bullet went into the wall perhaps took a little bit of unnecessary damage oi quit peeking Tired of these gunners in their wall hacks. Alright. How much bullets have got left of this thing? Not too much. I'll just hold them at bay here. Probably not the most effective door breach weapon, considering that I'm struggling to get these guys and they're getting a lot of good shots on me. But if I can do this without triggering Nerd Rage, that would be pretty advantageous. Don't, never mind, I did it. 
Which means I won't be able to utilize the Strew of Acadia against the next fight against the Swan, but what can you do, eh? But, yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Is there problems with the magazine on classic holstered weapons? Nah, eh, it's barely noticeable. As an apparel item, I still think it looks pretty good. Alright, so the Swan is around, and there's also dudes down there. Oh, yeah, that's the guy from, um, Vault 88, I think. He tells you he's out of stock and gives you a map marker to go there. Anyways, there's a Super Mutant. He goes down. Very nice. And now, we can get started on killing the Swan, which, usually, I don't have a scope of this, uh, magnitude. But, he'll pirouette like that. Isn't that nice? Now, has he aggroed those dudes down there? Well, he has. They will pay the price for their lack of my sneak criticals. I can't see him through the foliage there. Actually, I think one of them's died already. There you go. Now, what's probably going to be the best choice for me is to, first of all, knock him down if I can. And we'll just cheese this reload a little bit. Maybe add a critical into the mix. Take that. And then, switch over to our pistol version so we get a little bit of extra range. The recoil won't be quite as bad. And then halfway through his getting up animation, he decides, Nah, I'm not taking this damage. So if we can keep him at bay using this thing as a proper sniper, it's doing a pretty good job there. Will it keep it up? Probably. It's fairly easy to keep him at arm's length if he's rolling around on the ground completely helpless to anything. I don't know what it is about this weapon, but for some reason, we're just loving those gigantic, massive... Uh, cartwheel stuns that we're getting, even in slow, in like normal motion, because slow motion is even funnier. Maybe I should try that out. Okay, missing most of those shots. And there he goes again. He launches straight towards me there, and then immediately detects me because it's broad daylight. Yeah, it's fine. Let's uh, shoot him in the head a bunch of times. This should be enough to end him at this stage. Nice. Just get those criticals, I suppose. Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy run so far. We haven't been uh, under a severe amount of pressure at all. And for our legendary drop, we got a frigid shish kebab. It freezes people when you block them. It's uh, ironic considering it's a flaming sword, but... That's just the craziness that Todd Howard allows in his games. Alright, time to take the uh, Infiltrator SMG, rifle, whatever you call it, into a more uh, Stealth Commando type role, because we haven't really done too much of that so far, so let's do it like this. I was uh, playing this uh, little section in VR, actually. Had a bunch of rifles on me. I made mod weapons for the Nina Follower mod that I use in VR, and they're really cool. Because I figured that using laser guns made makes VR aiming easy, because you get really obvious traces as to where you're actually shooting. So the laser guns that I made for that one, they're just a mainstay. Also, the scoping system's really fun as well. If you watch the um, update on the Follower mod that I put out yesterday, there was a little bit of uh, gameplay. Like, it's not too hard making mods compatible with uh, VR in Fallout 4, because all you need to do is, um, all you need to do is change the mod version in, like, Fallout 4 VR edit, and then it'll just be fine. And where are the rest of those raiders? Sucks we can't lure them out, but honestly, I've got bigger fish to fry, so we can give those a miss. Now, that Milo Queen over there, we we'll just, uh, Hit her up like that, and she's down already. The mighty power of the uh, 38 rounds doing us pretty well there. Next stop is to lure this Mylurk over here. Even when I'm full autoing this, I can get most of these shots on. Granted, it's a gigantic crab target, of course. Got to move, otherwise there's a uh, spit to land on us. Going for the legs is always a good bet against Milurks because they've got no defense there, obviously. And we can slowly whittle his health down, and since this thing must be quiet, firing the uh, pistol cartridges, absolutely no problems of uh, whittling his health down nice and slowly. And now we're in danger. That's okay, I've got the dodge key ready to go, and hopefully plenty of stagger. 
maybe we'll take out the minion first because he might stagger me and get in the way. That cheeky little stagger thanks to that cap explosion there as I turn around to see the Milurk literally on me. That would have been better if there was like a Slenderman jump scare there. Should I add that in post? That'll, that'll catch a few off guard, won't it? Anyways, back to our regularly shooted leg shooting tactics here. And the mysterious stranger is showing up and I just got punched in the face by it. A worthy distraction, also nice to seeing him getting dumped and dropped on his ass like that. And we've got all these criticals ready to go. Despite the game showing us we've only got one critical, but after all that, we've gotten ourselves a little bit more damage. I tell you what, these staggers are coming in clutch at the moment because he's he's leaning in for those big claws, and at this stage, as he's mutated, is going to be extremely uh, well, it's going to be painful if I get uh, clawed by him. So it's good that we've uh, kept him at bay thus far. Nice swing and a miss there, mate. He's not hitting anything. I'm just backing out and he's just, he just can't comprehend it. I haven't even had to use a dodge key yet. I'll do it now though. He hit me anyway. They got a homing attack. The Milurks, they tend to like step, they, they sprint towards you at a speed. Not like the ghouls, which will uh, sort of jump and then not be able to change their direction as they're attacking. Anyways, actually, I've got a weapon for this. There we go. Look how accurate these spits are. They'll land exactly where I was standing. Look at that. I don't know, that's probably years of experience because I think lobsters, they never stop growing. They only die because they get eaten by things. Alright, so I think that is it. I think you get the idea. So the infiltrator pistol done up by TSX Ambers just made the mod even better. This is just a this is just way better than Dak's original vision, I think. Subjectively speaking, of course, you might prefer this thing to be in its standard um, version, but I think T6M just does a way better job at making this thing more versatile, more interesting, and um, more powerful, more viable. You know, that, that's always a good thing. So, yeah, if you're interested in seeing this weapon mod in your game, check out the link in the description. It should be a Xbox link as well. Also, um, every now and then, I get... I get um, comments on the YouTube channel about the characters and what they look like and apparently it's insult behavior to have gun toting thoughts like this if I play as them so I'm only allowed to play as male characters I'll, I, I have two responses to this is how dare you assume one's gender and also um, I'm not changing <laughs>